recording you and you may now count, count down. down. I give okay. you permission. Okay. Three, Oops. two, one, go. Oh my god, that was not oh, uniform okay. countdowning. <laughs> Three, two, yeah, well, I, one, go. <laughs> one, go. That's right. Well, not that it matters. We kind of go off sync anyway as the game progresses. But, yeah, because uh, but anyway. shared so, replay viewing for the win. I know, very, very unfortunate. We have to do it this way. So, um, so what are we, what are we watching? So Nick was streaming on the Halby Starcraft Twitch TV channel for a little while, which, by the way, do not go and watch that because there's nothing useful on it. Um, so just so that <laughs> his one viewer, me, could totally watch him play because I love watching Nick play, especially when I'm super tired or have a headache and can't play my play by myself. And th his opponent was this guy, EG Machine. So I Googled his name. No, I'm just kidding. I know who EG Machine is. And EG Machine was streaming at the exact same time. So I loaded both streams and I got to watch them both play uh, at the same time. And Nick's, Nick was streaming okay. in this horrible, terrible quality, but instantly, like I could instantly see things on Nick's stream. And EG Machine had like a 20 second delay because he had this super high resolution stream going. So I would always see what happened on Nick's stream and then get to watch it in high def, like an instant replay on EG Machine's <laughs> screen. Now, as, as a disclaimer, as a disclaimer, I, I, although you, we were talking to each other, I did not get any information from you. This was not a stream snipe. Yeah. I was not, you know, abusing, <laughs> abusing Halby's presence. So, uh, all, all, all you did obviously was just make sure it was actually EG machine I was playing. And so lo and behold, it was, and, and that was funny. <laughs> and so, it was good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was good. Honestly, I didn't know he was Zerg. I thought he was Protoss for some reason, but uh, no, he is he is a Zerg Zerg guy. And um, yeah, he can't be a mini me to to Hydra if he was Protoss. It wouldn't work. Wouldn't work. Oh out. yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Um, hello. Um, so I'm gonna basically do the same thing I I usually do. Um, which is the, ironically, the Demuslim build, which is a build I, I got from his teammate, E.G. Demuslim, uh, who stole it from Teja, and that's the the three racks, one factory, ten minute timing timing push. Um, so, we'll see how he handles it. And you're dropping names like flies. Yeah, I've played <laughs> two E.G.ers in the past past two weeks. Go figure. I still think it's funny that he beat you with his off race. Everyone always like considers him to be, you know, less awesome than than people like Idra or whatever. But he kicked Nick's ass. Take that, Nick. He, he <laughs> did. He certainly did. And um, yeah, I think you know he doesn't do super well in tournaments, but I mean, I think he's he's generally pretty good. You know, he does he does beat a lot of the pro players in various show matches, and his specialty is more kind of the in control name like the caster and the commentator and the host yeah i love this caster player, he's hilarious he's, um, he's great he's really funny <laughs> and very charismatic and um but he's still a decent player he's did you see his dance dance revolution video <laughs> yes i did <laughs> uh so um not much happening here so far i'm i'm uh just narrowing down my my choke a little bit so uh so one really weird thing about I'm this build is what's going on right now actually you you built three marines off of one racks and then you're not building any more units like at all yep <laughs> yeah because the three marines is all you need to to hold off up to really four or even sometimes six six zerglings if they come early you can as long as you you hotkey the SEVs that are on the low ground and use them to kind of run interference you can you can uh, manage a lot with them. So I get the three Marines. I get an early bunker in case there's any early roach stuff. And then I um, uh, go from here into the 310. So uh, a seven roach rush is super common. I doubt EG Machine would do it, but it is super common. And it would be hitting 10 seconds ago, and you'd have an unfinished bunker and three Marines. And then you'd be dead. So Upgrade. you've told me that if you do this build right, you should have a Marauder before six minutes. So does that mean you didn't do the build right, or that yeah, you lied to me? Yeah, I did not do the build right. Yeah, I got I maybe a little bit of both. I um, you just like I to lie usually to me. will get that that uh that Marauder early, but in a case like this, I you know I was not super concerned about a 
uh, a road rush. And, um, you totally just so saw a drone. So he's taking his third now, right? <laughs> Either that or well, he was no, about to drone. He's heading out you. towards the middle. <laughs> Yeah, well, he has a drone's got him because he's heading to the north watchtower. of his base. Is that weird, stupid third that he's not supposed to take, and he was probably going to take that. Uh, I don't know. I'm not convinced. Maybe. Um, I mean, if we if we cheat right now, he hasn't even taken any thirds right now, and all I had was a Hellion out there, so I don't know why he would, <laughs> he would be bashful. Well, look, either he was trying to take that base with that drone, or he's stupid because you don't just attack the middle with a drone at that point in the game. <laughs> so I'm, sure I'm going to go but. with he was going for that expansion and you convinced him not to get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, he's uh, he's uh, 15 workers ahead, which I guess is pretty standard for this point. 52 at 8 minutes is definitely the standard Zerg opening. Unless he's Unless uh, he's attacked you by now, he should have 52 workers. Or if you've killed a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, this is kind of just yeah, the macro yeah, stage. I see, yeah. I see he has not taken his, his third where he should be taking it. Um, actually, no, he just tried to take it with his drone. This is at 845 now. Yeah. Um, and he's coming out with four roaches to, to clear me out. I am now at nine minutes because I'm a nine minuter. I'm always faster okay. than you, man. So Replace thinking yeah, for the win. you are. So what's your prediction about uh, who's winning? And Well, and, the uh, goal of the build that you're doing right now is to line up the three replays that we can see you have almost finished right now. Because Stim takes longer than Shields, and so even though Stim's closer to done, Shields is going to finish at the same time. You always start your plus one attack, which is also going to finish eventually, a little bit late uh, for my tastes. And you also always have like idle racks for a little while, because that bunker is not meant to be part of the build, like the way the Muslim does it, there's no bunker. Um, right. So uh, you have to be pushing out right now because this is when your three three things are gonna gonna pop. And if he does too much damage to these Hellions before the the actual fight, then you're gonna be in serious trouble. I love uh, I right. love that he caught you putting down your third with one ling, and he's gonna totally delay that third with I one. I know. Oh, that's ling. so annoying. Yeah. So your goal here is to keep really your Hellions to to alive and hidden behind your infantry while your infantry stims up and kills his nonsense. But your Hellions are only going to get two shots off in that whole fight, which is kind of bad. You ripped his army to shreds, though. Definitely did more damage than you took, and you're going to knock yep. down that third. That went well. And that's really yeah, important. Yeah, he's knocking down my third in the process with one lane. I that's know, so lame. Absurd. I have <laughs> Killing this third, uh, even though, like killing a third isn't necessarily something people should count on. It, and with this build, if you don't kill his third, you pretty much lose, right? Yeah, I agree. Unless unless he's going super army heavy and just isn't making any uh, any drones at all, it's it's really bad if you don't kill that third or do a lot of damage in the process. Um, so I did kill it, and I'm ahead on damage done. I've, I've done about $2,000 worth of damage, and um, he's done 700 to me, so I'm feeling good, but I just neglected that third. My third should be done and landing. But instead, it's about to be force canceled because I have no army to defend it. My regular army is dying to roaches, and he's going to kill it with two lings. So that is kind of ridiculous. Like this big dramatic push, and I kill his third, and it's great. And now he kills my third with two goddamn lings. <laughs> so we're on even footing. If 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 not him ahead, I I would say at this point he's ahead, especially considering that I have almost two thousand dollars in the bank, and that that was probably a mix of me being nervous and not getting gas early enough, and like, I have guys that are near the gas but didn't actually get put on them. So um, a few minor mistakes from my, my side of things really evened out this game considerably. So he's actually had 20 unit space right now. Well, one of the biggest things um, that that's putting him ahead, because he's stuck at 52 drones, and you have 52 SCVs. So with two mules, you should be way ahead. But first off, you're not dropping mules. And second, you have four extra SCVs in your main than you do at your natural and you didn't quite put all three dudes on gas at your at your natural so just the the micro involved with actually running your base to to the most efficiency also obviously you didn't throw down enough buildings so you had all this money in the bank it's really like the the nervousness of playing against cg machine is causing you yeah. not to really macro right uh especially yeah. having yeah, almost the, I mean, full energy on both command centers 
Well, maybe I'm doing that. I think at the time I'm like, well, I'm going to save it up and put it down in my natural. Not that it really matters. That they're not the energy isn't totally maxed out. Yeah, I just spent it now, so I actually evened out, and I had plenty of minerals on the bank, so that really wasn't an issue. The issue is that I'm I you know, with those mules get accounted for, I have way more money than I can spend, and that really comes down like nervousness is a big piece of it because. You know, the key, the hardest part about this build is when you push out, because you have to mind your Hellions, so you scout, see where his army is, take the Watchtower, see if he's got a third, and keep keep your... Oh, we've got a little bit of action here. He's coming in with... You're um, so far behind. It's uh, 1430 on my screen. <laughs> but yeah, he just uh, came, yeah, came I, in with three Changelings, saw your, your little fifth of your army was standing out unprotected for no reason and just surrounded it and killed it without taking any losses. So he used to be about 800 bucks behind and now he's ahead by 200. Um, no, he's, he's behind by 200, but yes, your, oh yeah, you're your, right. your mm -hmm. point is, is taken. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the point I was making is I should have, when I was pushing out, I needed to have been macroing at home. I should not have been greedy and taken that CC in place. I should have... I should have played it more standard, and I just I just kind of got flustered. I, I have that I exact have problem in TVZ on this map almost every time because there's nowhere to build the set the third command center. Like you hey, walled right. in yeah. just below your CC, and now there's nowhere to fit that CC in. Although, frankly, that there's several maps in this this season's uh, map pool that have that problem. There's Core Hall Compound. You really can't put it anywhere. Daybreak. You can't put it anywhere. It's uh, it's it's really maddening. It's very um. Oh man! What else is maddening is doing a ling run by, and it, he's had changes on your army lot, like this whole time, so he can just do ling run bys and know that it's gonna work. Right, right. I hate changelings, man. Oh, and Meanwhile, then he kills your army while third, you're, but yeah, while you're mopping up the run by. But, but you hold that, that actually, off quite that well. I, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm at I'm a $800 job. Right now, I would say another big mistake I'm making is I'm not getting enough tanks. I have one tank, and I'm making uh, too many Marauders and Hillians. I'm trying to spam uh, spending, and I, I should be making more factory units because uh, tanks is what I'm going to need to be pushing across the field and doing damage. If I, if I have too high a Hillian Marine Marauder count, it's just going to be kind of... Um, kind of game over for me so why that's, is that that's one thing i'd say i'm doing wrong at the moment. I, I'm, I'm always taking well late, because so i'm interested in what you're saying here yeah i i think it's a matter of being positional like at this point in the game you really need to be staking out uh, a point in the map preferably outside of his third or fourth or fifth base um, and you can't do that without tanks you need at least three four five or six tanks to to kind of hold the ground and prevent him from coming in with banelings, prevent him from getting a good surround with, with the Hellions, and you know, especially with fungal growth in play, it's it's like uh, I really you really can't do much with that tank. That's what I've been noticing about this build, uh, just in general, is that it really needs a high enough tank count, or you need to spam drops and be really good with drops. And since I'm not doing drops, I need more of a um, a ground presence. So I don't I don't know if I agree or disagree with that, but I certainly did see in in the series of games you played yesterday that you did a lot better when you found a position and forced him to walk into it with with your tanks. But in right. this game, you've been right. so far ahead on army for so long now that I, I really wish that you just sprinted across the field and engaged with some scans up in front of your army to make sure good things happened. Because now well, you have 200 unit space to 160 from him, and he's waiting for tier three to really fill out the rest of his unit space. I think. Right. Um some fungal growth going on on your army as you do a doom drop in the backfield you're going to probably kill his ultra cavern and his baneling nest but is it really worth losing half your army in order to kill a few of his buildings no. in the backfield i don't think so and that's another thing if i tanks if i had three tanks in with that drop he would have such a hard time getting up that ramp i could just clog it to heck with with uh, marauders and hellions but the way this is he just comes in and cleans it up and i, I lose more damage than I take. So I am ahead 700 on damage down, but I should be a lot more. I mean, I've made some pretty poor decisions right here. I'm taking my fourth. I know he's on three, probably four bases, so I'm feeling good about that, but after that drop kind of failed, and I I did kill his Ultralist Cavern, so that's a plus, but in general, I'm, I'm feeling kind of kind of nervous about things. You only um, have 57 another, workers, and you've only exactly, lost I was just six. About to point that I out. feel like at 20 yeah. minutes in, what the hell? You know, <laughs> that's that's how that it's makes true. me I feel. I mean, that's <laughs> that's 
you know, it's a good thing when you're at 200 U and you only have 57 workers because, you know, it puts you... It means you've got that much more army, but at this point in the game where it's very much an economy and he's got the perfect number of workers and I'm essentially 15 short, uh, it's a very bad thing. You're right. Yeah. Uh, my money's starting to dwindle. And, and for minutes. the second time, your army was bigger than his and he beat you anyway because of this composition problem, I guess. Yeah, you know, I... Oh, I just closed. There we go. Um... <laughs> I would say it's a composition problem, and I, I hate to kind of sound like that that whiner, but I just, I really think infestors with tier three, be it ultras or or brood lords, are just really really difficult for Terran to beat. I dare say OP that it's just so you know, in the theoretical TVP, counter is. We've been saying that yes. such and such late game composition is impossible, at least for us to beat. So our solution is never to let them get to that point. Why haven't you taken that approach in TVZ? Why are you late game centric in TVZ? Well, if I could figure out how to beat him earlier than that, I certainly <laughs> would. And the goal, the goal of the uh, of the Muslim push is that you really put him behind early on, and I did. I mean, I, I was ahead at that point in the game, but I just didn't capitalize on my um, on my win. Um, you definitely when you were at on 180 and he was at 140, and you were starting to try to push out, but kind of taking your time with it. I think you did have an army at that point that could have won the game. Because he didn't, he wasn't done with his ultras yet, in, in good time. So yeah, I feel like the push did what it needed to do. It put you ahead. It made him take forever getting his third. Yeah. So this was a big positional problem. If I were kind of more by my watchtower, I could have cut those ultralists off. But as it was, I kind of rushed in. He fungles me, surrounds, and I'm I'm dead. That's pretty yeah. much that's pretty much game over. Definitely pew pew. <laughs> so passivity, yep. bro, passivity. And passivity problems are more common to see in TVP, but this was definitely around 16 to 18 minutes, I think. Yeah. Eh. No, yeah. Close 17 to 18 minutes. Uh, yep. So, um, it felt good. I mean, overall, I feel like I did not get crushed. I made a few, you know, small mistakes that compounded by the end of the game, but... You know, it's one of those games that I look back and felt like if I had just done a few things differently, it really could have gone differently. It really could have gone in my, my favor, and maybe that's a pipe dream. He is a, a pro player after all, but that, that was a sentiment I took after after losing this game. Yeah, I was happy with how well you did. I mean, we at the beginning of the game, you called into the other room and said, hey, Ashley, I'm playing uh, a teammate of In Controls now. You can watch if you want. It won't make me nervous. I know I'm going to lose anyway. So it's not like you're expecting to win this game, <laughs> and I think that's a big part of the passivity at the at the 18 to 18 and a half minute mark. And so I'm proud of how well you did. You know, you knew you were going to lose, and you didn't lose too terribly. So good job. <laughs> <laughs> I lost like a boss. Yeah. Uh, one thing from him that I'm really impressed with is that he went with four or five infestors all game. He never really massed infestors the way you see from most players, and he used yeah. them so well. Like, uh, when you split yeah. your army up into two two spots, he used just, like, four fungals and a Ling Baneling surround to just completely wipe out your army. And I was like, right. man, he's got so many infestors. And then I looked, and it's like, mm, he's got four. He's got exactly four infestors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really cool. Yeah, very good with them. Any who's he, what's it? We can move on. We'll I stop making fun of poor All guys. right.